space. Uh, Switzerland. The final Switzerland. And France. And France. Home of some of the world's best cheese. Two countries united by a lack of air conditioning, divided by a border, and brought together once again by one of the foremost research facilities studying particle physics. I'm talking about CERN, of course. Here, on the Franco-Swiss border, physicists have made one of the greatest breakthroughs in modern science. That's right, this is the site of the Higgs boson discovery. Well, the Higgs boson is responsible for determining the masses of, all, of the fundamental particles. We know that fundamental particles have mass, we know that objects have mass, you know that seems self-evident to ordinary people, but to physicists it was still a mystery until quite recently. So we wanted to know what it was that gave the particles their mass, and that turns out to be um, a mechanism related to this particle discovered, the Higgs boson. And um, you know, without that mechanism or something that did it, then, then particles wouldn't have mass, and that means that particles wouldn't be able to form bulk objects, so you and I wouldn't be sitting here talking about it. So it's pretty profound, actually. Particle physics is the science of collisions, an abstract study that might seem like a thing of magic, but there's actually much more happening at the subatomic level. In order for physicists to gather the collision data that gives insight into the existence of boson particles, two separate proton beams must first be sent speeding around the LHC in opposite directions. The beams collide within the four detectors located at different points on the LHC ring. Though the LHC is down now for two years of repair, physicists were able to glean sufficient evidence of the Higgs boson's existence, and this is with the LHC operating below its maximum power. When you build a machine like this, uh, it's a prototype. They're always prototypes. These big, big particle accelerators never work first time. Uh, we switched the LHC on in, uh, on the 10th of September 2008, and it's interesting, you know, now we get beams around it 11,245 times a second. Um, that day, it took us about half a day to be able to get a beam to go around once. And then a week later, it broke. And it was a, a really mundane start. I mean, what went wrong was a solder joint. That just It was a poor solder joint and it, it, uh, it, it heated up and set off a sort of chain reaction of other things that led to a large number of um, the magnets, the key components of the LHC being damaged. So we've been running it now for three years at um, three and a half, four TeV per beam, three and a half, four times higher than the energy of the previous machine in the world. So we had a big discovery potential and it paid off. But now what we've got to go in and do, we've, we've found that the, the basic design for this solder joint, of which there are 10,000 in the machine, uh, was flawed. So we need to go in and redo 10,000 solder joints. That's going to take quite a long time. Uh, so we'll, the LHC switched off February this year, it will switch back on again in spring 2015. And then we can go up to higher energies, higher collision energies, which gives us, one, uh, more data more quickly for certain things. So uh, we'll be able to, to, to learn more about the things that we've already discovered, like, like Higgs bosons, for example. But more importantly, it gives us a, a whole new discovery potential. So we may be able to discover new things that are waiting out there to be discovered. More data, more quickly, meaning higher computing demands. The way the computing system works for an LHC experiment is that you select the data as it comes out of the detector and the beams collide 20 million times a second and some amounts of data comes out but we only select about a thousand of those events. Uh, everything else is thrown away. Uh, a lot of it's thrown away by hardware on the detector where we say this isn't interesting very quickly. At the hardware level when you have to make a decision very quickly it's very coarse. Basically you look for a lot of energy or a missing piece here. Uh, and then after that, you begin to reconstruct the event, and then you can be a lot more selective, because once you start to reconstruct things, you can look for particular kinds of physics, uh, that there's a, a particular kind of particle. And once that ha happens, we, uh, we select down to about a thousand events uh, per second. Those events are securely stored and made available to researchers at labs and universities around the world for analysis. The discovery of the Higgs boson was no small feat. It took an unprecedented amount of international collaboration to qualify the findings. CERN was founded a long time ago. We'll be celebrating our 60th anniversary next year. Uh, we were established very soon after the Second World War, and the ideas that uh, science might be a way that European nations could start working peacefully together came along in the 40s, and CERN was actually established under the auspices of UNESCO. CERN was established to do two things. Uh, if you look at our founding convention, it's a very simple document. It says that we'll provide a place for scientists uh, to come together and uh, pursue basic research in physics 
and it was a place where um, the countries of Europe could come together. And we've taken both of those very seriously over the years, so we, um, we are now a laboratory where we provide state-of-the-art facilities. We don't do experiments ourselves, but we provide state-of-the-art facilities that allow scientists from all over the world to come and work here. And the all over the world bit is very important too because we, we see that uh, inclusiveness is the best approach, that uh, you know, great ideas can come up anywhere in the world and uh, you know, Europeans don't have a monopoly on brilliance, right? so, uh, so we're open to the world. During this scheduled downtime, physicists continue to crunch the massive amounts of LHC data, opening up the possibility of further discovery while also setting the stage for new experiments to be conducted when the LHC is back up and running at full power. But what we don't know yet, and we still have to do more research on, is whether this is a Higgs boson that just completes our theory, which is a very good theory, that explains all the ordinary visible matter in the universe, everything you see around us, or whether it's something that would take us beyond that, to understanding the part of the universe that isn't ordinary visible matter, um, the kind of stuff that makes up you and me. And that's a big question, because um, we know that what we think of as ordinary matter really is pretty extraordinary. It's only about 5% of what the universe is made of and we want to start exploring the remaining 95%. So now that we've taken you underground to see the caverns that house Alice and CMS, we're taking you outside to give you a different perspective to show you the outlying areas that reside on top of the Large Hadron Collider. In fact, behind me, you can see the Chateau Voltaire, a property formerly owned by the man who invented the Volt. Volts, which are not currently running beneath my feet. But in 2015, when the Large Hadron Collider starts back up again, you can be sure things will be whizzing about.